gang, it's JC, and this is the Daily Dose for Tuesday, October 5th, 2010, a cooperative venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. You can get us on your mobile phone, archives top of the page, eye candy archives bottom of the page, Dave Murray's weather forecast, and the audio on iTunes as we roll on with our 15-month paid vacation. Uh, stick around because we're going to give stuff away here in just a minute. We didn't forget about you. It is four weeks from Election Day. I just thought I'd point that out. This thing is really starting to heat up. A uh, gentleman by the name of Radomir, Radomir uh, told me that he was listening and watching the Daily Dose in the Czech Republic last week. We have gone international. That's always nice to hear. All right, yeah, let's do the uh, 7-Eleven thing here. Let me uh, bend down here and get the big old bad mug here because this is your 52-ounce Extreme Gulp. And we asked the question yesterday. Hold on, I dropped something. I'll be right back. Hold on there. Ugh, I, need, I need a producer. Um, anyhow, so we asked the question yesterday, who was 11-7? I said, you know, it's somebody who was on the show all the time, and we had the little nickname 11-7 because that's what we estimated the income on an annual basis for Joe Buck. By the way, Joe texted me yesterday, and he said, because I told him what we were doing, and he's like, yeah, I wish that was accurate. Anyhow, the answer, Joe Buck, that's who 11-7 was, and we congratulate Carrie Ernst, Rich Hughes, Graydon Thompson, Kathleen DeRoche, Angela Smith, and Ted Williams, all winners of the 7-Eleven 52-ounce mug, the taquitos, the hot dogs, the big gulps, and the slurpees. Oh, thank heaven for 7-Eleven, and hi to everybody at Teamworks down in Phoenix, AZ. All right, went to the Rams game on Sunday. I think I mentioned that, and uh, I was looking at this yesterday. It just dawned on me. Look at the size of these tickets now. Come on. Why does a ticket for an NFL game have to be that size? You know, when I used to go to the Bears games in Chicago, the ticket was like a little thing like you get in a raffle. There's a number on it. It corresponds to something. It says the day of the game. You hand them the ticket. They tear it. You walk in. Yeah, you got a thing the size of a press pass, and these things keep getting bigger and bigger, by the way. Pretty soon, you're, it's going to be like you, know, you win the uh, you win the uh, grand prize of the golf tournament. You know, they give you that giant oversized check on a piece of foam core. People will be walking in with these giant things. The TV ratings, by the way, for the Rams dropped four points on Sunday from the previous week. Now that was a sold out game, and I was there, and I spent a lot of time looking at a lot of empty seats. I would guess that it was somewhere between seven and ten thousand empty seats in the dome on Sunday for a game that was ostensibly sold out. So somebody bought up a lot of tickets and either didn't give them away, had them for lunch, or gave them to people that for whatever reason didn't go. My guess is that with the way things are going, that's going to be changing here very, very soon. All right, speaking of TV, Conan returns in about a month, and on TBS they've started running the promos for Conan, and one of the ones they have running right now is a parody of that famous Paris Hilton commercial where she's washing the car while she's eating the burger and getting more soap on her than she was on the car and conan did that maybe we will run that as eye candy tomorrow let's see i got a real good eye candy today though so a cbs news manager was arrested for growing pot in his house when cbs executives found out about it they were shocked well they were shocked it wasn't charlie sheen dallas boy i'm telling you late 70s early 1980s the TV show with the Who Shot JR episode, one of the most watched television shows in the history of the medium. And now TNT is talking about bringing Dallas back with Larry Hagman, Linda Gray, and Patrick Duffy, who the last time I checked weren't very busy anyhow, so they might as well do it. Uh, said to be up for roles, also Kiefer Sutherland, who's done with 24 now, and also Jennifer Love Hewitt, who's done with her show, which I don't remember what it was, but I know it was really dumb but people like her boobs. So, New survey out says that 80% of women would not want to date guys from the TV show <laughs> The Jersey Shore. 80% would not. See, but that's just it. Regardless of what it is you're talking about, there's always about 20% of girls out there who will pretty much do anything. All right. FSN has announced that all of the Blues games will be in high definition this year. Last year, about two-thirds of the games were in HD. That's the good news. The bad news is if you have Dish Network, they're still fighting with FSN. And there was no cards game last Friday or Saturday if you had Dish Network. There will be no Mizzou game this Saturday if you have Dish Network. There will be no St. Louis Blues games at all in HD or anything 
um, on FSN if they don't get this worked out. Now, some people have had it up to here already, and they've already tried to jump to another company. And by the way, don't go to DirecTV. I've been there. It's just as much of a nightmare. So some people are jumping over to AT&T UVerse, and I'm not a huge fan of AT&T, but uh, people are going over there and being told that there is like a waiting list of over a month. They're like, eh, I may be able to get to those games in November. And it's like, November? Then what the hell are you running commercials for all the time telling me to convert? You take your sports away from even casual sports fans, and they get really, really ornery. And the other thing is I've heard stories about the Attorney General's office fielding lots of complaints. In other words, somebody says, okay, I just signed up for Dish Network, and uh, I'm three months into my two-year contract, and they say, hey, uh, we're not going to have the Cardinal games or the Blues games or the Mizzou games. They have gone to the Attorney General of the state of Missouri and have gotten out of two-year contracts if they do everything right. So all may not be lost. All right, let's talk about American Idol. The shows that you're going to be seeing when the show re-emerges in January are all being recorded right now. And the inside word is that you got J Lo there and you got Steven Tyler and it's Randy Jackson who's being the prick. So apparently Randy has uh, gone away from his little, well, you know, I'm such a nice guy, I don't want to say anything too critical. And apparently he's the one being the jack off. So we'll wait and see how all of that plays out. All right, today is Tuesday and around here that means Celebrity Tuesday. And today we're going to talk about Brian Wilson and, and to some extent the Beach Boys. Now I'm going to take you back to 1980. It wasn't pretty, folks. J.C. was 27 years old and working in Omaha, Nebraska at Johnny Carson's old station, W.O.W. And uh, the Beach Boys were coming to town, and so Bruce Johnston, one of the guys in the band, was uh, the guy pretty much doing all the publicity, all the phoners and stuff like that. So we had Bruce Johnston on. They were going to be doing a big outdoor show at Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha. Now, that's where they play the College World Series. And at that time, it was a pretty decent place, nice field and everything, and they put the Beach Boys out in center field. And back in those days, I had been spending a lot of time hanging around backstage at concerts. I'd only been in the business, well, in 1980, I'd only been in the business professionally, about six years. And so, uh, I, you know, I, back in Indiana where I'd worked, I'd been backstage at Bob Seger and Kiss and a couple of shows like that. So... Um, they bring in the Beach Boys, and uh, now you've got this all-American, wholesome band. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you, you got a backstage pass, you know, go on in. And they have these uh, tra very large trailers, but trailers nonetheless. And I go in there, and Brian Wilson is sitting there. Now, again, this was pre-internet, and you'd heard rumors about Brian Wilson, like, having a nervous breakdown and stuff. Well, there was no doubt in my mind that he was suffering from some sort of severe, and I mean severe, emotional trauma. I mean, this guy was sitting there with a blank stare on his face. He had a, uh, a, a, a rotund, shall we say, a rotund uh, black woman who was clearly a, a, a prostitute. She was in uh, skin-tight spandex. She was sitting on his lap, and Brian Wilson was smoking pot like he was trying to win some sort of pot-smoking contest. I'd seen people say, so I didn't do drugs back then. Um, yeah, a little asterisk there. Anyhow, uh, but he was just a, <laughs> he was just going on and on like crazy. He was practically hyperventilating. And I'm sitting there. I'm 27 years old, and I'm just sitting there looking at this. It's the Beach Boys, for God's sakes. Let's go surfing now. Everybody's learning how. And and, and Brian Wilson just looks like he is, uh, uh, like he's just gone. Plus, as I said, it looked like he was trying to win some sort of contest as to how much pot you could smoke in one sitting. So, uh, now the band takes the stage, and I was in the orchestra, the uh, photographer's pit, you know, looking right up at the band, and to see these guys in the band, just, they were all playing like, like, like this, looking over at them. They were trying to look at the crowd, but they were, like, playing like this, looking at Brian Wilson in the corner. I'm not even sure if his piano or microphone were even hooked up to anything, but there he was, and they hit a little sandbox, and he has toes in the sand, and he was just sort of banging away on the keyboard, and like I said, I don't even know if any of that was going out. But it was, uh, it was a rough decade for the Beach Boys. They had to recover from being very unhip and uncool there during a good portion of the 70s and even into the 80s. Dennis Wilson drowned. Then they played the Muni in the late 80s. And one of the most depressing things I ever saw was, I think it was 2002, uh, it was the VP Fair was going on. And the Beach Boys were playing the VP Fair under the arch grounds. And at the exact same time, same night, same time, 
Brian Wilson was playing at Riverport. And it just, the whole thing just seemed so sad. Ran into some of those guys again at the tribute show for TNT, Beach Boys thing that they did with Billy Joel and Elton John, which was a great show, by the way. If you can find that online, the tribute, the uh, TNT tribute to Brian Wilson was absolutely spectacular. I was there in New York for that show. Celebrity Tuesday, I didn't say it was going to be pretty. All right, JC's Video Village this week. A lot of talk about Tony Curtis, who died last week. We got his daughter, Jamie Lee, from back in 1998. And an interview I did with her in California for a movie called Halloween H2O. The Wayback Machine is one of the more interesting things I've ever put up on the website. And it goes back to 1993. You know, Bill Clinton is in the news now because his approval numbers are off the charts. And back then, it was a, the, the, we had the, it was like international crisis with Iran and uh, Iraq and the whole Middle East and everything was going crazy. And he was going to go on TV in about five minutes before he went live on the network with his address to the nation. I had one of those big 10-foot satellite dishes with all the scramblers and decoders. And I pick up the rehearsal of Bill Clinton getting ready to go on the air in five minutes. I pick it up in my living room. And so I hit the record button, and you will see it. You'll see George Stephanopoulos running around behind. I thought he was going to strangle the makeup girl, by the way, Bill Clinton. So watch for that on the way back machine. It's really cool. I'm not overselling this. JC's old school photo for this week is eight years ago at Walt Disney World in Florida. You'll see me and Regis and Kelly. That's our old school photo. JC's eye candy today. Somebody spent a lot of time on this. Somebody spent a lot of time on this, and it looks great. It's an old Donald Duck cartoon with a bunch of Glenn Beck stuff edited in. And uh, Donald Duck becomes so uh, paranoid about everything from Wall Street to the Mexicans from listening to Glenn Beck. Well, I don't want to tell you what happens then, but check it out, JC's Eye Candy. It's right below what you're looking at right now. As I said, somebody put a lot of work into this. It's worth checking out. All right, that's it. JC's Daily Dose for Tuesday, October 5th, 2010. A cooperative venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Tell everybody we are here at jconthelinecom In the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye.